Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Meath and Kildare Online Harvest Festival. And I use the word festival carefully. Our faith in our diocesan life together enables us to be always hoping, always giving, and even always finding celebration. We recall our diocesan vision statement, together in God's love, transforming lives. And we vow both to transform our own lives and the lives of those whom we meet with the love and the freedom we have found through Christ. This year, this is our harvest offering. We bring ourselves. We may feel weak and fragile. We may be fearful and not know what the future holds. But as a community around this diocese, we are neither bowed nor broken. I sincerely hope that you will be encouraged by this harvest service. We need to reconnect with the natural world about us. Our modern way of living insulates us from the changing seasons, from heat and cold and from where our food comes from. And we have our centrally heated homes and air-conditioned cars. Our worship ought to reconnect us with the natural world, God's creation. Creation is crying out because of the harm we have inflicted on her. So let us begin by giving thanks to God, our Creator, and remember, as Martin Luther said, the Gospel is not only found in the pages of the Bible, but is written in the trees and the flowers in nature all around us. Whether we live close to the land and grow our own crops or live at a distance, we all depend on the land, weather and agriculture to meet our need for food. Today we give thanks and praise to God for the harvest, providing food for the, the world. Let us give thanks to the Creator for making us. Let us give thanks to the Son for saving us. Let us give thanks to the Spirit for guiding us. Let us give thanks for the harvest, for the abundance gathered in. It is right to give thanks and praise. Amen. God of Compassion in the midst of death and evil, you mercifully look after us, constantly reassuring us of your care, protecting, providing and smiling. Grant us the joy of this occasion as we gather to worship you, knowing that you offer us fullness of life, praising, praying and giving. Teach us to number our days aright, that we may acquire a heart of wisdom through him who is both the gate and the good shepherd, even Jesus Christ. Amen.
shall take the harvest home from the field shall in my day all offenses purge away giving angels start at last in the fire they're still cast but the fruit Job 12, verses 7 to 10. Ask the animals, and they will teach you. The birds of the air, and they will tell you. Ask the plants of the earth, and they will teach you. And the fish of the sea will declare to you. Who among all these does not know that the Lord has done this? In his hand, is the life of every living thing and the breath of every human being. Let us pray. Dear Lord and Father, we are sorry that we so often forget that all creation belongs to you and that you have made us responsible for its well-being. Forgive us for the damage we have inflicted on the planet and on our fellow creatures, like the birds and the animals and so much wildlife. Help us to change our ways and in humble love and service to cherish your whole creation. Amen. Bless the Lord, sun and moon. Bless the Lord, your stars of heaven. Bless the Lord, all rain and dew. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, you springs. Bless the Lord, you seas and rivers. Bless the Lord, you whales and all that swim in the waters. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. A reading from John chapter 4 verses 13 and 14. Jesus said, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for water which is so precious, water to cleanse and revive us. Without water, we cannot survive. We remember those who struggle to find water every day, those lying in areas of the world affected by drought, often caused by man-made climate change. But we also thank you for water of life that Jesus gives us. That inner spring in each one of us, filling us with hope and peace, giving us the will to love and serve one another, especially those who have so little. Lord, 
Fill us with the water of life, now and always. Amen. Bless the Lord, all birds of the air. Bless the Lord, you beasts and cattle. Bless the Lord, all people on the earth. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, all winds that blow. Bless the Lord, you fire and heat. Bless the Lord, scorching wind and bitter cold. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. The earth bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, you mountains and hills. Bless the Lord, all that grows in the ground. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, all the birds in the air. Bless the Lord, you beasts and cattle. Bless the Lord, all people on the earth. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. This is a reading from Deuteronomy chapter 11, verses 13 to 15. If you will only heed his every commandment that I am commanding you today, loving the Lord your God and serving him with all your heart and with all your soul, then he will give you rain for your land in its season, the early rain and the later rain, and you will gather in your grain, your wine and your oil, and he will give, you, give grass in your fields for your livestock, and you will eat your fill. Let us pray. Grant favor favorable weather, temperate rains and fruitful seasons, that there may be food and drink for all creatures. Bestow your blessing upon the lands and waters and all who work upon them to bring forth food and all things needful for your people. Prosper all who care for the earth, the water and the air, that the riches of your creation may abound from age to age. Lord, we ask your blessing on all farm animals that we rely on for so much of our food. Bless the farmers and all those who are in charge of these wonderful animals. May they care for them and enable them to have stress-free lives. Amen. The reading is taken from Luke's Gospel, chapter 12, verses 24 to 27. Consider the ravens. They neither sow nor reap. They have neither storehouse nor barn, yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? If then, you are not able to do so small a thing as that. Why do you worry about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of these. Let us pray. Lord, help us not to destroy, but to protect the wild, free places of this planet, which are a precious haven for so much wildlife, flora and fauna. Help us see the harm that we humans have done in the past and work together to bring back from certain extinction many species of wildlife. Amen. A reading from Genesis chapter 2, beginning at verse 8. And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground the Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. A river flows out of Eden to water the garden, and from there it divides and becomes four branches. Let us pray. 
Thank you, Lord, for our gardens and parks, for the digging and planting, for the growing and the harvest. Through all this, may our faith be renewed by your Spirit, which brings new life and hope. And may we be inspired to care for all your creation. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. A reading from Colossians chapter 3 beginning at verse 13. Bear with one another and if anyone has complaint against another forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Let us pray. Remember, Lord, your mercy and loving kindness towards us. Bless this good earth and make it fruitful. Bless our labour and give us all things needful in our daily lives. Bless the homes of this parish and all who live within them. Bless our common life and our care for our neighbour. Isaiah chapter 28, 23 to 26. Listen and hear my voice. Pay attention and hear my speech. Do those who plough for sowing plough continually? Do they continually open and harrow the ground? When they have levelled its surface, do they not scatter dill, sow cumin, and plant wheats in row and barley in its proper place, and spelt as the border? For they are well instructed, their God teaches them. Let us pray. Lord, you give us this good earth, yet we take your generous gifts for granted. Lord, have mercy. Lord, you give us this good earth, but we squander its rich resources. Christ, have mercy. Lord, you give us this good earth, but we fail to share your bounty with all your children. Lord, have mercy. We remember all those who had gone before us. We benefit from the labours of our ancestors, as others, we hope, will benefit from our labours when we have gone. Let us hope we leave God's creation in a better state than we found it. In this churchyard, we are surrounded by reminders of death. But the Spirit of God brings hope and new life. We see it in the natural world about us, in the trees, and grass. God's Spirit is at work in creation, in newborn lambs, the spring flowers, and in the lush green hedgerows. O people of God, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, you priests of the Lord. Bless the Lord, you servants of the Lord. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, all you of upright spirit. Bless the Lord, you that are holy and humble in heart. Bless the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. The Collect for Harvest Eternal God, you crown the year with your goodness and give us the fruits of the earth in their seasons. Grant that we may use them to your glory, for the relief of those in need and for your own well-being through Jesus Christ our Lord. Collect for the 18th Sunday after Trinity Almighty and everlasting God, increase us your gift of faith 
that forsaking what lies behind, we may run the way of your commandments and win the crown of everlasting joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. The Thanksgiving. Let us give thanks to God, the God of all peoples of the earth. For the colour and forms of your creation and our place within it, we bring our thanks, good Lord. Your mercy endures forever. For our daily food and for those who work and whose skill brings your good gifts to us, we bring our thanks, good Lord. Your mercy endures forever. For the gifts and graces inspired in human minds and hearts, for insight and imagination, for skills of research which bring healing and fulfilment to lives of many, we bring our thanks, good Lord. 
Your mercy endures forever. Amen. For the light and shades of the changing seasons and their variety and dependability, for new life and growth out of barrenness and decay, we bring our thanks, good Lord, your mercy endures forever. For new hope and strength in our communities, especially in your church and among all you call to serve you, we bring our thanks, good Lord, your mercy endures forever. For all in whose lives we see goodness, kindness, gentleness, patience and humility, and all the fruits of the Spirit. We bring our thanks, good Lord. Your mercy endures forever. For the life we have been given, and for all those whom you have given us to share it with, we bring our thanks, good Lord. Your mercy endures forever. Our epistle reading, Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 to 7. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. How on earth do you do harvest in a pandemic? It's definitely more challenging if harvest is all about bringing forward the fruit of the earth and thankfulness for God's creation. When life is abundant and the land is bringing forth riches, then harvest is easy to celebrate. But this year there's a more meager offering when you consider the dearth, for example, in the hospitality and tourism industry, the rising numbers at the moment of COVID-19, and the inability to get together much at all, either in our households or our churches, to celebrate the harvest season. How then do we celebrate harvest when in reality, our world is in the midst of sickness, fear, and seemingly minimal reward for hard work? The Philippians reading for today reminds us that our gratitude our mood and our faith are not dependent upon constant fruitfulness. We're told, rejoice in the Lord always, followed by the Lord is near, don't worry about anything. It seems that we can be joyful and peaceful, even when we're not surrounded by the evidence of harvest, as we normally would be with our churches filled to capacity with both produce and people. This harvest is different. Can we rejoice even when the land is fallow and when the cupboard is bare? Philippians reminds us that we can and that our joy in God is not restricted to when the land is overflowing with abundance. We may have to take joy in the little things, a sunny afternoon, a coffee out, the autumn colours, the affection of a pet. It's always possible to rejoice, but there are times when we have to discipline ourselves to remember all that is good in our lives and there will always be something the lord is near do not worry about anything this year there doesn't have to be a harvest of worry and fear the scriptures provide us with way out in today's reading by telling us to bring everything to god who cares for us and if we do that we will know the peace of god guarding our hearts and minds this of course is not a constant experience for any of us like any relationship worth its salt, it takes discipline and remembering. We promise in our marriage vows to care for one another for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health. Most of us only realise the solemnity of these vows when we find ourselves with a partner who is worse, poorer or in sickness. That's when the vows are challenged and when it's most urgent that we keep them. Our faith is much the same. 
It's easy to give thanks for the harvest when it's abundant. When things are going well for us and we can lead our normal lives, we're happy to give God his due and bring him our gratitude. But when life throws us a few curveballs, and the virus is one massive worldwide curveball, it can be harder work to find within us and amongst us a thankful and indeed joyful heart. Our faith is tested, but it's not defeated. Rejoice in the Lord always. And when worry and fear are imminent, the emergency exit is to let our requests be made known to God. Tell him how you feel. Talk to him. He's a companion as well as a master. His promise is peace. If ever we needed peace of mind, it's now. We should be praying for peace for those who govern us and make decisions on our behalf. It's an unenviable task to guide us through these dark times. We should be praying for peace for those who look after our health and well-being and who put themselves in danger. We should be praying for peace for one another in our churches and homes who are finding holding fast to faith a challenge. We're all human. This year has been a tremendous test to each one of us and especially to those who've lost a loved one or, or who are sick or anxious. Because we've made vows to follow God for good or ill and knowing that he's the God who truly cares for us, we hold on and we determine to rejoice. And we recall at every point that he loved us before we loved him. I am praying for you. May this harvest in 2020 be a gathering in amongst us of immense faith, hope and peace of mind, not because of COVID-19, but despite it. As people of faith, we will not cave when we're assaulted by a hidden enemy. We will hold on and more than that, we will thrive. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this harvest and always. Amen. As always with everything in life, nothing just comes together. So I'd like to pay a big tribute and thank you to Bishop Pat, for all our readers, for Beverly, Esther, Gavin, Gillian, Grace, Gwen, Haley, Harriet, Heather, Joe, Kim, Mark, Richard, and Richard again, Shane and Zoe for helping me out on reading. I'd also like to thank Harriet for providing our music, for Joanna for technical support, and for God, who is the master of all things, and to you for watching this. Until the next time, God bless you.